Hello, welcome to another video by Mox the Marine. In this video, I am uh, doing initial troubleshooting and startup on a Mercruiser 5.7 with throttle body fuel injection. Um, that's the throttle body there that you can see on top of the engine. It's a 454 throttle body, two injectors, and they spray alternately. But um, I've covered that in another video. Um, so what happened is um, yesterday I got it running for the first time and um, I had it running and then I shut it down and then uh, I had it running on whatever the base time it was when I first built this engine and uh, shut it down, loosened the distributor in the back so I could adjust the timing. And then uh, you put a jumper, uh, I have this little white jumper wire here, and you put a jumper between terminals A and B on your diagnostic link connector. That's uh, that wire there. I get the focus so that wire there and that wire there that's a and b if you look right in here you can see the letters right through here you see the letters on the side of this piece of plastic so you put a jumper between a and b and uh i don't know if you're supposed to do it before you crank it up or after i think i did it while i was already running and uh when i did that the rpm sped up a lot and then it and the notice the timing locked down here locked at one spot it wasn't moving around so uh, it wasn't right, so I had to, uh, I used this timing light and I adjusted the distributor and I got the timing to mark to eight degrees before top dead center. Um, I previously painted a mark on the balancer there at the eight degree mark. So I got the timing just right, um, was satisfied with that, shut it down um, and then uh, locked down the distributor. And then when I tried to crank it back up with the distributor lock, it wouldn't start. And uh, it cranks over, it cranks over, would not start. So. Um, I did what's called anti-flood mode. I thought maybe it was getting flooded. So when you anti-flood mode is when you hold this, I haven't got the throttle connected yet, by the way. If you hold the throttle to the floor on these uh, MEFI systems, all the way to the floor while cranking, it shuts off the fuel so that it clears the flood. And then when, as soon as it tries to start up, you immediately let go and it should run. But it wouldn't, it would try, it would try to run, but it wouldn't stay running since I let the throttle go. So um, I messed around with a little while and uh, couldn't really decide whether it was getting fuel or wasn't um, getting air or whatever. So um, um, I finally decided to, uh, I hooked up my remote start switch, which is right here. By the way, um, this is a very invaluable tool for working on boats. So this is a remote start switch, and it means I don't have to get up and go up to the ignition switch every time I want to start this engine. What you do is you hook it up between the, uh, on, you find your starter solenoid, which is right down here, and you hook it up on the, the terminal with the yellow and red wire that's loose. See, there's a post right there. I've got it hooked to there and I've got it hooked to battery power right there. So when I hit this uh, remote start switch, it starts the motor, cranks the motor over. Of course, it has to be, the ignition switch has to be on before it'll fire up. So anyway, um, I decided to get the remote start switch and then crank it and hold the throttle open with my, with my hand to make sure it was getting enough air and it cranked up. And so I decided that, okay, it's not getting enough air. Why is that? Well, um, and so what I decided to do, if I yank this hose off, this hose is a vacuum leak, a pretty big vacuum leak, and it leads to the same passage and it equally distributes the air. This is your PCV hose, by the way. That passes there, equally distributes that air to both sides of this engine, just like the idle control motor back there. So it's right, it ran and it ran uh, at a fairly high idle speed without disconnected, and that's fine. So that tells me that the idle air control motor stopped working. So an idle air control motor, this is one here, I've got a spare. This came off of, this came off an LS motor, um, a truck, LS truck engine. And uh, so I'm gonna try to use it in a minute, but um, this is the idle control motor on this engine. So what it does, if you look down in there, I don't know if you see it, uh, I'm trying to get some light in here. Um, let me see if we can get it focus down in there. There is a pintle, well, I'll show you in a second, but anyway, there's a hole inside this throttle body and there's a pintle and there's a the pintle moves back and forth with this idle control motor so if the pintle is pushed in it blocks the hole and it slows the engine down it basically stops the air from leaking past it and if the pintle retracts the computer wants it to speed up it retracts that pintle and air goes through the hole and, and keeps the engine running faster so that that device there is how the computer controls idle speed on these engines um like i say i've got a spare and uh what i'm doing now is um so when the engine first cranks up, it wants to idle fast. It has a fast idle uh, algorithm. So this, when you first turn the key on, this idle control motor will back way up to let it have a fast idle. And once it starts, it'll gradually run that pencil back in and slow it down. So uh, what I'm doing here is I'm going to try to, uh, since I can't operate the key up there front and hold this idle control motor at the same time, the master relay right here is turned on by the key switch. So I know that if I put a jumper in there and make contact and basically simulate that relay turn on, 
it will power up the computer and make this idle control motor move. So that's what I'm about to do. Um, and like I said, I'm gonna pull this connector off, take my idle control motor right here uh, before I install it and then wire it up and then try to make it move back and forth by turning the power to the computer on and off. If it does move, I know it's not the computer's the problem, it's the, it's the idle control motor's the problem. If this one moves and that one doesn't, then that's the problem. So as soon as I test that, if this does move, then I'll remove that and do the same test. If that doesn't move, then I've isolated the problem to this device right here. And that's what I'm about to do now. Okay, so I've got the master relay disconnected and I'm simulating turning on the key and I've got the uh, harness connected to this spare idle control motor. And if I uh, jumper the uh, power, you'll see the thing move. So let's do that now. So when I pull the power off, it uh, extends and tries to uh, close off the hole. So the computer is moving this thing around, but the computer is not moving this one here. So I'm about to remove this one and see if it does the same thing. And if it doesn't move at all, I know this is bad. All right, so as you can hear, the engine's running normally. What I did was I, uh, one trick you can do. This is this is the pencil that was in the uh, LS. That LS uh, idle control motor, you can swap pencils from one to the other. So I took the pencil out of the LS device. I took the pencil out of this, but this, this was locked up. It wasn't moving at all. It didn't move at all. So I had to I pull the pencil out of it. <coughs> and I put the pencil with that one, screwed it in, and it's working fine. So um, right now I'm down that idle and uh, just checking things. I just checked the. Uh, the voltmeter is pegged and it's not working, so um, I checked the out, put the alternator in the battery to reach 13.75 volts, and the alternator is working, but the, the gate is not working. Uh, I still have to connect up the uh, throttle linkages and transmission linkages. I'll do that shortly. It's not very hard to do at all. Um, but overall, the engine is running fine. Uh, now that I fixed the out of control motor. Also, the timing is, uh, I checked the timing again, and it's dead on, dead on 8 degrees before not dead center. So the engine's running great. Um, now I've got to uh, tidy it up, connect up the uh, throttle linkage and so forth, to figure out what's wrong with the gauges. And uh, that'll be ready to go back down. Thanks for watching.